Good morning, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us. We continue to introduce you to the major party candidates for governor. This week, it's Democratic candidate Sonia Chang Diaz of Jamaica Plain, who served as state senator for the second Suffolk district since 2009. Senator Chang Diaz, welcome. Thanks for having me, John. It's good to be here. Good to see you. So uh, you're in an elevator with an undecided Democratic primary voter. Give them your 30-second elevator pitch of why you should be their choice. Well, it's pretty simple. You know, it has it is getting harder and harder to live here, to raise a family here, to work here in Massachusetts. We've got, you know, housing prices that are going through the roof. We've got some of the worst traffic congestion in the nation. Uh, fastest growing student debt load. We've got the consequences of climate change barreling down on us. And for too damn long, Beacon Hill has been telling working families to wait and wait and wait for you know real systemic change to these problems. And in my time in office, I have seen that we don't actually have to wait. We can do a lot better than this. We can achieve real systemic change when we decide to, um, but we need a lot more urgency in our work on Beacon Hill and the governor's office is a huge lever for injecting that urgency. Well, let's try to get a little sense of what kind of change Governor Chang Diaz would bring. If you were governor right now, what changes, if any, would you make in state COVID prevention policies, such as masking in schools, vaccine mandates, and so on? John, it's a great question, and one is that I know is you know, top of mind from voters everywhere that I go and that I'm talking to. Um, look, I think you know, no executive can anticipate everything that's going to happen in a pandemic like this, but there is a lot that we can anticipate. And we've got to get better at looking you know, down the road and around the corner and getting prepared for the things that are predicted um, and predictable, right? We could have seen, you know, we did see, in fact, right? It was known um, over this past holiday season that there was going to be a spike in Omicron transmissions. And it was totally predictable um, that there was going to be an attendant spike in demand for testing um, and for uh, masks and PPE. We could have done a lot better at getting prepared for that and not just waiting until these fires, you know, erupt, uh, but get prepared for them before they turn into crises. Also, uh, I, I will say from the very beginning of the pandemic, uh, you know, through every stage of it, we need to do a better job at centering equity, equity, equ equity. Again, totally predictable and predicted that Omicron and all of, you know, Delta and before that, you know, in, in the initial stages of the pandemic, that COVID was going to rip through low-income communities and communities of color with greater force and ferocity, and we could have done a better job, and we could still do a better job at getting prepared for that. Well, some of your colleagues in the Senate have been called on Governor Baker to uh, institute a statewide mask mandate in schools. Are you one of them? I am one of them, John, and I think it's pretty simple, right? We have to follow the science. It, you know, we have to be disciplined about this. We have to be fact-based and research-based. Um, the CDC um, has laid out the guidance that where we, in, a, in any county that has um, substantial or high transmission rates, that there should be an indoor mask mandate. And I think we ought to be following that guidance. You mentioned uh, you're tired of Beacon Hill dragging its feet. Uh, and in your announcement video, you specifically called out Beacon Hill insiders for dragging their feet. Uh, is Maura Healy a Beacon Hill insider? You know, John, I, I think that that is a, a question that, uh, you know, voters are going to have to assess over the course of this election. And folks need to look at all of our records, right, because the next governor is going to need to have um, the courage and the willingness uh, to, you know, come off of the sidelines, uh, not just say pretty words, but back up those words with action um, on the toughest issues that are facing. Oh, oh, okay, but, but let, let's cut to the chase. Uh, you, you know Healy's record. You know your own. I sure uh, do. You know, who's the insider between the two of you? Look, you know, again, John, I think this is a question of assessing records. Um, I can speak for my record, right? I know that over the past 13 years, it has been my North Star um, to center the needs of working families and the tremendous load that they are carrying. And people know, with even a casual look at my record, right, that I have never hesitated um, to come off of the sidelines and, you know, take on the tough fights, even when it has involved, you know, not just standing up to folks in the opposing party, which I have done, right? I got into this race seven months ago, even when, you know, folks presumed that Charlie Baker was going to be running for real 
election and I was going to be, uh, you know, going up against a well-financed incumbent. Um, but I'm also have shown I'm willing to stand up to leaders in my own party when that's necessary in order to get change done. And ultimately, that's what we're going to need in our next governor is someone who's willing to take on those types, those fights, not just when it's easy, but when it's politically inconvenient. All right, I want to follow up on that when we continue our conversation with Democratic candidate for Governor, State Senator Sonia Chang Diaz. And we'll do that in a moment. Stay with us.